Hello dear viewers and welcome back to the review program. This week, particularly on October 15th and 16th, Tashkent and Hiva hosted the International Conference Islam, the Religion of Peace and Kindness. This event brought together more than 70 leaders, religious figures and scholars from 22 countries. During this episode, we will explore the significance of this event and its potential impact. The idea for this prestigious conference was proposed by the President of Uzbekistan during the 78th session of UN General Assembly in September 2023. He emphasized that Uzbekistan is homeland of great scholars like Imam Bukhari, Imam Termizi, Beruni, Ibn Sino and Mirza Ulugbek. Diyarımız Jahan ilim fanı rivacıge bir kıyas kısa koşken İslam'nin ilim marifat ve tinçlik dini sıfatta namayan yetken Al-Kharazmi Biruni, İbn Sina, İmam Bukhari, Mirza Uluq Bek, Alişer Navayi, Singarı <coughs> Uluq Allama ve mutafakkirler vatanı yekanını bilen haklı ravuşta fakırlanamız. Şunday büyük alımlarının boy mirasını organış, İslam'nın asıl insan parvarlık mahiyatını çukur açıp beriş maksadı da. 2024 yıl Uzbekistan'da İslam, tinçlik ve izgulik dini mavzusu da Halkora Konferensiyonu otkazış taşabbusunu ilgari suramız. This conference that reflects this initiative began with the recitation of Holy Quran. After that, the advisor to the President of Uzbekistan, Hayreddin Sultanov, read a message from the President to participants of the International Conference. The conference title Islam, the Religion of Peace and Kindness, reflects the true essence of Islam as a religion of peace and security for all. As stated in the Quran Surah Al-Baqarah verse 208, all you who believe enter into peace entirely. The President's message also highlighted the growing presence of Islamophobia in today's globalized world, affecting the mindset, culture, customs and values of Muslim societies. Therefore, the main goal of this conference was to widely promote the values of the Islamic religion, highlighting its peace-loving essence, especially in a time of intense globalization. It aimed to foster religious tolerance, teach respect for universal values, and combat radical ideologies that distort the true image of Islam. Additionally, the event was a platform for sharing Uzbekistan's unique model of balancing religious and secular values. Scholars, religious figures and muftis from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Turkey, Jordan, Oman, Russia, the USA, France and many other nations attended the event. The conference included scientific lectures, initiatives and discussions focused on promoting peace and highlighting the humanitarian nature of Islam. In his speech, Mufti Nuruddin Kholuk Nazarov, chairman of the Office of Muslims, stated that some countries misuse religion for corrupt purposes, but emphasized that Islam is a religion of goodness and obedience. 
In some countries, misguided groups are causing unrest in name of the religion, which worries many people. Some parties are attempting to link these destructive groups to Islam. However, Islam is a religion of peace, harmony and security. During the event, Deputy Secretary General of the Muslims World League acknowledged the significance of Uzbek scholars and their timeless contribution to the Islamic world. He stated that their legacy is a testament to the power of knowledge and the enduring influence of Islamic scholarship. Our Creator called all humankind to live with kindness and peace. As a result, the light of Islam spread across the East and the West. Special mention must be made of the scholars from Uzbekistan, whose knowledge helped spread this light. Among the great scholars of Mawar and Nahr, they left a significant legacy in all areas of Islamic sciences. In particular, the entire Islamic world benefits from the work of Imam Bukhari, author of Sahih Bukhari, the most reliable source after the Holy Quran, and Imam Tirmizi, author of Shamoilul Muhammadiyah. The conference was divided into three key sessions, each focusing on important themes that not only resonate in Uzbekistan, but globally. They were the role of Hanafi Maturidi teachings in preserving Islamic values, Islam in the context of globalization with more emphasis on moderation and tolerance, and practical solutions for countering ideological threats in today's world. Let's delve into these sessions one by one. The first session of the conference discussed the rich teachings of the Hanafi Maturidi School of Thought, which has played a key role in the preservation of Islamic values throughout history. Hanafi Maturidi teachings represent a major school of thought in Sunni Islam, combining the legal principles of the Hanafi school and the theological beliefs of Maturidi creed. Hanafi school that founded by Imam Abu Hanifa is known for its flexibility, reliance on reason, and use of analogical reasoning and juridical preference to derive rulings. It emphasized public welfare and practical solutions in legal matters. Maturidi theology established by Imam Abu Mansur al-Maturidi. This creed emphasized rational thought in understanding faith. Scholars from different countries reflect on the significance of these teachings in promoting peace and coexistence in the modern world. Great scholars such as Imam Bukhari, Imam Termzi, Imam Dormi, Abu Mansur Maturidi who have contributed to the development of Islam for several centuries have grown up in this country. They are figures who left a bright mark in the Islamic world. The legacy they left represented the truth of the Islam. The holding of this conference in the land of scholars has a deep meaning. These scholars have a special role in the promotion of peace and tolerance of Islam. The prestigious international conference Islam, the religion of peace and kindness, initiated by the president of Uzbekistan, is significant for providing key insights into the development of the Hanafi Maturidi teaching and its role in the global peace processes. This conference in Uzbekistan also highlighted previously unknown contributions of leading Maturidi scholars, raising global awareness of their work. In the second session, the focus was on how Islam remains relevant in the face of intense globalization. Moderation and tolerance were crucial values emphasized in these discussions. The aim was to foster a better understanding of how Muslims can preserve their identity while engaging positively with the broader global community. Where there is peace, there is progress, development and growth. Mawar and Nahar has been home to many scholars of the first and second renaissance, largely because of the peaceful coexistence of Muslims and other religious communities, fostering an atmosphere of tolerance. In recent years, Uzbekistan has continued to promote these principles of humanitarianism. If this progress continues, the foundations of a third renaissance will undoubtedly be established. Thanks to the strength and sincerity of our cooperation, every time I visit Uzbekistan, I feel at home rather than like a guest. Similarly, when Uzbeks visit our country, we welcome them as brothers and sisters, reflecting the true friendship between our nations. I wish the conference to be successful. And finally, the third session tackled one of the most pressing challenges of our time, how to prevent ideological threats in modern society. This session focused on practical solutions to counter extremist ideologies and how Islamic teachings can contribute to peace and security. It is unfortunate that in today's troubled times, many conflicts arise from the misinterpretation of religion, sometimes leading to violence. I believe the root cause of this is ignorance and misunderstanding of religion. To protect young people from such threats, one of the key solutions is education. This conference held in a country known for producing great scholars like Uzbekistan promotes a deep understanding of true Islamic enlightenment and opens the path to the greater truths. Islamic scholar Mehmet Gormes, director of the Turkey's Institute of Islamic Thought, shared his views on the importance of this prestigious conference and the religious reforms in Uzbekistan. He noted that Uzbekistan is one of the few countries advancing both spiritually and economically. According to him, if Uzbekistan established an institute for every scholar, every household would become its own institute.
If Uzbekistan established an institute for every scientist it has presented to the world, every household in the country would effectively become an institute. For the past 15 years I have led the Department of Religious Affairs in Turkey and have come to know Uzbekistan well. As I mentioned in my speech, I had the privilege of meeting the great Uzbek scientist, Shaykh Muhammad Sodak Muhammad Yusuf, at various global events, where we engage in meaningful discussions. I see that a significant reform movement is underway in Uzbekistan, one that is rare in recent history. It is crucial that these reforms are two-sided. While some countries experience spiritual revival, they often lack economic growth. Uzbekistan, however, is achieving both urban and economic development along with cultural growth. Simultaneously, a spiritual revival is taking place, reflecting the core values of this blessed land. This unique situation positions Uzbekistan as an exemplary model, not just in the region but globally. For Uzbekistan to truly thrive, it must integrate faith, morality, culture and civilization. I wish success to the significant movement initiated by His Excellency Mr. President. The International Conference on Islam, the Religion of Kindness and Peace has both scientific and practical significance. The President's acknowledgement of the conference and his engagement with participants indicate that this event is not merely a meeting but also a vital project that fosters peace and goodwill building practical results. I believe this will promote peace, goodness and blessings not only in Uzbekistan, but also throughout Central Asia and the world. On October 16th, the conference moved to Hiva, one of Uzbekistan's historically significant cities. It is here the final declaration of the conference was adopted. This declaration is expected to send a strong message to the world, promoting Islam's humanitarian values and Uzbekistan's leadership in fostering interface dialogue and peace. At the international conference in Hiva, several prominent figures gave a speech. The participants emphasized the contributions of great scholars from Uzbekistan and the importance of studying their legacy. They highlighted how these scholars revealed the true humanitarian essence of Islam, with messages still relevant today, especially for maintaining peace and security. The conference also addressed rising Islamophobia, international conflicts, and the negative effects of globalization. The participants supported the need to study Islamic teachings more deeply and to promote this knowledge among the youth to counter such challenges. In addition, several noble initiatives were proposed and the declaration was addressed to the President of Uzbekistan. The conference concluded with the adoption of this declaration. As part of this international event on October 17th and 18th, participants went to Termes, Turhandaria region, to be part of the Scientific Practical Conference. An international scientific practical conference on the role of Imam Termizi's scientific heritage in Islamic civilization took place at the Imam Termizi International Research Center. The two-day event brought together over 50 prominent scholars from around 10 countries, along with leading Islamic experts and researchers from Uzbekistan. The opening ceremony was attended by Muzaffar Komilov, advisor to the president of Uzbekistan, Shaykh Nuruddin Holog Nazarov, chairman of the Muslims' Office of Uzbekistan, and other distinguished scholars from various countries. Moreover, participants of the conference visited the shrine of Imam Termizi in Sherabad district, at the grave of the great Muhaddi Abu Isu al Termizi, the Quran was recited and praise were offered. The visitors learned about the shrine's history, ongoing construction and renovation, and facilities for pilgrims, the library, and mosque activities. They expressed their appreciation for the state's recognition and care for this respected Imam. Here our analysis come to an end. We hope you have gained significant insights into the most important discussions that were held during this international conference. Thank you for watching. Don't miss review program every Sunday on Uzreport TV.